Hey everybody, Beyondrew TV here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to our tour of the Three Golden Llama Zoo. So if you're somehow just stumbling upon this video and haven't already, be sure to go back. There is a whole playlist of uh, how this zoo kind of came to be, and it's not a long playlist or anything. There's not too many episodes. This was just a quick little mini series for the Planet Zoo South America pack there, uh, just to kind of highlight all of the animals that um, came in the pack and to use a lot of the uh, pieces that came in it as well there. So that is the um, that is kind of what the theme of this zoo is there, just pretty much the South America pack and waterfalls. I love the waterfalls. So, uh, but yeah, again, if you haven't already, be sure to uh, check the description description or there might be like a little ticker in the upper right hand corner click on that check out the uh, full playlist of how this zoo came to be but um, other than that let's go ahead and walk on in as we uh, move past our giant waterfall there I love the water features and waterfalls and everything that we have in the game and as we come on up here are our three golden llamas that are the protectorates of the zoo there from the uh, let's just say the ancient juju in the zoo the ancient juju in the zoo. I like that. Okay, there you go. But here's our <laughs> three golden llamas. And I said it in the episode when I had it. You have to. Everyone has to start at the front of their zoo if you build a South America zoo. I need to see those three golden llamas protecting your zoo and everything like that, right? So <laughs> there you go. As we come on in here, here's our ruin entrance there. Had a lot, a lot of fun. And you're going to see it throughout the zoo. This is kind of our main theme here of using these uh, kind of temple ruins and everything like that. And uh, all these pieces just uh, um, you know, work really, really well together. And I really like this kind of uh, vibe that we have going on here. Also note, um, you're going to be hearing uh, throughout, just before this episode, I realized that it was very quiet in the zoo and that I hadn't put any sounds or anything. So I tried to put some of the South American um, like bird sounds and jungle sounds and swamp noises, as well as some of the music as well throughout most of the zoo there, except for a few certain areas. But um, so yeah, keep an ear out for those, for that as well. Um, but yeah, as we come on in, if you'd like, you can get a little bit of, you know, some food and some gifts and stuff like that. Around here is, you know, your, your pooper, your restroom and all that fun stuff. But yeah, as you... Uh, kind of move past your main entrance way there there's no animals up front here kind of wanted to flush the zoo out let it let it breathe a little bit as i like to call it um you kind of come into uh the zoo here the main part of the zoo and you have um first off some ruins that you can see here that i built and there is the main ruin right up there <clears throat> so yeah this is built right on top of a hillside there and uh, right up top, there's a little Easter egg for those of you that are watching this video and are going to download the map um, for the yeah for the map here that I built. Uh, there's a little Easter egg up there if you've seen like Raiders of the Lost Ark from Indiana Jones or just um, anything like that. You can go ahead and go up there and see the little uh, the little room that I set up there for uh, for you to, for you to explore or anything like that. So yeah, but here's this little again this little uh, ruin area, and I love the way that this all kind of worked out there. I've um, we were kind of joking around in my Discord community. I've used this this is an Indian pillar from the base game. And it looks just so good in a lot of settings. I've used this exact Indian like pillar in this same way tilted over in like three of my builds now But whatever I'm gonna keep doing it because it looks great every single time so <laughs> but there's our ancient ruin entrance over there or uh, just a uh, Building basically over there, but we're gonna go ahead and look at our first little uh, bu um, Bugs our first animals here, which are the creepy things. Yeah, they consist of the bugs and arachnids and um, it's a few of the uh, South America creepy crawlies down this way so yeah we've walked down this little hole down here not many people come down here but there's just more uh, interesting animals around the zoo basically so um, I wish more people kind of came down here because yeah we have our little creepy things hole that sounds so bad when I say it out loud but yeah. <laughs> what do we have here we have the um, we have the Brazilian wandering spider which let's see if we can see them yep back there's Jorge Let's see, somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. You see it? It's supposed to be right around here. I don't see it, but I believe he's there. If you saw him, comment down below. Let me know if you saw I didn't see him. He said it was right behind the tree. So we have that, and then we have the uh, centipede, I believe. I believe, I believe. Yes, we have the Amazonian centipede there. Javier. Where's Javier? There's Javier, right on the other side of the tree. And this is gonna be this should be easy to see Javier. There's Javier. So there's Javier hanging out there. So there's two of our statue animals. You know, oh good, we have a group that can't actually came down here. Um, but yeah, I really like how this came out because um, I explained it in the build video that this little area was basically originally just a plot of land that was going to just be foliage. Um, and I just kind of decided to dig a hole, right? <laughs> just dig a hole and theme it up a little bit and uh, put some bugs down there. So just uh, this nice little uh, area right there. So across from there, before we accidentally skip it and just get your bearings, this is where we were originally, just kind of made a little loop. Um, across from there, we're going to have just some more little scenery pieces and everything. Really have fun scattering about the little temple ruins and combining it with um, these 
these are a lot of the Indian and African pieces and everything. So I had a lot of fun combining everything together to get that ruin look. But across from our creepy things are the ant eaters and tapirs. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. In my original episode, I uploaded it with Okapi in the title, and I called them Okapi, I think, a few times. But no, they are tapir. They are tapir. So, <laughs> oh yeah, we have the ant eaters, which are brand new for the Planet Zoo South America pack, and then the uh, Baird's tapir, which are have already been in the pack before. I can't see our ant eaters. They might be eating um, in their new ant hill right there. So let's go ahead and head down this. Oh no, there they are. There's one right there, coming on up to say hello, hello, uh, Mrs. I think they're all girls there. Yes, Marina. Hello, Marina. I'm just now realizing that there's no way for my keepers to get across here, so that's why it stinks. <laughs> uh, but anyways, and there's the other one over there. So there's our two uh, tapirs there in their giant enclosure that is shared with the... Um, oh, gosh. The two ant eaters that are sharing their enclosure with the tapir. Woof! I can I can English today. I can speak. It's it's early, but anyway. So yeah, as you um, that's your kind of top view of the um, habitat there, and then as you turn around. Uh, also, uh, note you can um, I put out some of these little uh, covers using the new uh, bamboo sets and everything from the South America pack and stuff. Same with our little cover over here. This is all made with the uh, kind of new thatch roofing and bamboo and stuff like that, or wood pieces and stuff. But as you come around here, you kind of can go down a little bit. And then you have kind of where the anteaters uh, mainly eat. And this is a really, really fun little view here. Excuse me. Uh, this is a, little, a really fun view here when the um, anteaters get fed and everything and they're just crawling all over it. And the guests get a really cool, you know, at uh, basically just their level view really, really close to them eating and everything. So you get a really close view of, uh, um, you know, them in action kind of thing. So there you have that with the somewhat kind of underground viewing, I guess you'd say. Um, and then if you come back up and around this way, you have this bridge and I had a lot of fun um, interacting the paths together here so you have a lot of terrain you can see it here you have a lot of terrain differences right so you start up top and then you kind of come down and if you'd like you can take this bridge that goes over top of the you know part that goes underneath and then we're gonna eventually end up right over here so I had a lot of fun um, using different terrain elements and uh, elevations and everything to get a really a lot of different views of the um, of the habitat here so this area over here again you're kind of um, same height as this over here but you get a nice little um view of their little uh, sleeping area so i put a lot of bushes over here so they still don't get if the animals would like to they can come over here and kind of get out of the views of the guests and not be stressed i um, mean we even tell guests hey mister don't you talk anymore um but yeah this is a little you can see them sleeping area over there so yeah there is the ant eater and tapir uh habitat from a guest view and by the way we are going to look at the zoo real quick at the end of the video from a bird's eye view but i always like to view things in a guest view because that's kind of what we're building for right we're not building for the birds up top you always got to bring your camera down and build for the guest view there so um but yeah there is that oh my gosh i forgot it pops us out right next to the next animal just bam 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 animal 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 <laughs> um, but as you can tell probably from the loud noises that they are making across the way but right across from our tape here and ant eaters it's hard to get your bearings in the uh, jungle here. I had a lot of fun using the South America um, foliage and the jungle foliage to really uh, make this feel, you know, super jungly. Yeah, that's the official term we're going to go for, jungly. Um, so you can really lose your bearings in here pretty easy. So, um, but yeah, as you can hear from the bells and whistles and the monkeys yelling and everything, we are looking at our cappuccino monkeys here. Or the capuchin monkeys, as they're ap um, actually known there. Does it say cappuccino? No, it doesn't. But anyways, yeah, there's about, like, 13 or 14... Um, uh, cappuccino monkeys here. I'm going to keep saying cappuccino. It's just going to happen. Uh, capuchin monkeys in their little um, monkey island here. So as you can see, they kind of climb all up and over their uh, temple ruins there. There's some right there climbing all around. And yeah, there's a whole bunch of them in there. I, I really wanted to kind of... Um, not jam pack because I want to give them some room, obviously, but really pack it with a whole bunch of monkeys in there so they um, they have fun playing playing around and really fill out their little island area and stuff. I'm just realizing now that there's a really cool sp perspective thing going on too because this back here, these ruins you're going to see in just a second aren't attached to the island, but from the perspective here, it kind of looks like it just kind of keeps going, doesn't it? So, uh, but yeah, there's our little capuchin monkey island, at least the front view there. If you come around this way, it kind of goes all the way around as we. Is that me? It's me! I found me! That is so funny! <laughs> I've never seen me in a planet coaster park or a planet zoo park up until now, but I found me. That's so funny. Okay, anyways. 
<laughs> um, but yeah, as you come around here, it kind of uh, circles around the island, around this way, you get some more views. Now you can see the kind of perspective that we had before, where this is actually attached to the hillside or the mountainside. There's some more of those temple ruins, uh, continuing that theme. And another waterfall, of course. Have to keep the waterfall theme going up. But yeah, there is our capuchin monkey um, little... There, oh, there's one drinking water. Um, but yeah, a little capuchin monkey, uh, monkey island there. And it's so funny, you can hear these guys everywhere. Oh, I love this too, they climb up the, these new trees over here. See them climb up there. Um, but anyways, you can hear them everywhere throughout the zoo. It's kind of cool, but it's also like, oh my god, stop! <laughs> and then over this way you have, uh, kind of threw in some, uh, some more uh, food and uh, water and areas and some restrooms and also, um, Put in some of our bugs, some more of our insects. No, they're not insects, they're arachnids. I keep mixing up bugs and arachnids. But anyways, yeah, some more of our arachnids and stuff like that from uh, the South America continent and everything. So we have the Goliath Bird Eater. This did not come with the South America pack. Not everything did, but these are from South America. So, uh, so we have the Goliath Bird Eater and the Brazilian Salmon Pink Tarantula. So there are those. Let's see if we can see them. I always like to play this game. The Can you spot? The animal. Pedro, where are you, buddy? Oh, Pedro's right there. Oh, he is right there. Hey, Pedro. So there is Pedro, looking like a champ. And then we have... Have, have, have... Sylvia. Where is Sylvia? Sylvia's right in front of us, too. Look at them. They're just both out and about wanting to say hi to everyone. So there is Sylvia doing her thing, being a spider. Stay in there behind the glass, please forever okay let's go ahead and um leave the little uh monkey island area and go ahead and head back down the main path here so we go ahead and go out this way so now we're back across from our tapirs and ant eaters and from the monkeys and heading down our main path so this is where we kind of have to start running you see the guests running this is where we're gonna have to start running and this kind of plays into the map being released because there are big swabs of the zoo that I did not fill with any animals. I just wanted to fill it with the South American animals in game and then wanted to release it to everyone to kind of um, fill out the rest of the zoo however you would like to. So um, these big areas to the right are a good expansion um, pad for those of you that would like to uh, build upon it there. Um, but yeah, the uh, last little, um, not last, but the um, next South American animal we have here, this one came from the South America pack, is the, uh, what is it called, the green, red-eyed tree frog, yes. The red-eyed tree frog, and we have three of these in here. Let's see if we can see it. There's one right in the center there, it looks like, maybe on the other side. They should be easy to see because they are bright as heck. Oh, I think I just saw, there they are, there's a few of them. There's actually all of them. <laughs> That's so funny. All of them are behind the wall, so no guests can see them right now. But yeah, there are the uh, uh, red-eyed tree frogs there, which are new for the South America pack. And I really like this idea. I, I kind of forgot to uh, <laughs> to put these uh, frogs in there, basically. And I was like, oh, shoot, where am I going to put them? And I was like, done with the build. Like, done, done with the build, basically. I was like, well, I have this little area over here that um, is just terrain. It just kind of looks uh, terrainy like that. It's like, you know what? Let's just slam it into the side of the hillside. That'll, that'll look good. And I kind of like how it turned out, to be honest with you. I'm not upset about it. It was a little bit of a last minute... Um, um, addition kind of thing, but it kind of turned out kind of well. So, uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and continue down this way, and we can go ahead and start to see the next large addition or uh, habitat for the zoo here. And there's two different ways you can go see it. We are going to take the longer route down this way towards the uh, towards Joe's shack down there, and we have to tell the story of Joe's shack as well. Um, but you can also take a left right here if you'd like to cut through and get to the jaguar habitat, which is way up on the hillside, um, and that's going to be the last thing that we see um, before we uh, head out there. But yeah, we're, we're going to skip the shortcut for now and go and look at our llama habitat, which is the, I think it's the biggest habitat we have, and I did that on purpose, but our llama ranch basically here. You can kind of see some of there. There's the furry butted llamas. There's oh, look at that! Look at that majestic shot of that llama. But uh, there's uh, there's a good uh, number of llamas in here. There's uh, I think there's like 14 or 15 llamas or something like that. Um, but yeah, this is a huge little habitat that we have here. Again, it's basically a ranch. You can see the uh, you can see the barn up there. We'll get better views of the barn as we um, and when we go back up that way eventually. But yeah, I really like this. Um, this habitat, how it turned out with the natural hillside that we have here, and I put some of their uh, their food down here. Oh, I wish they were filled right now, because <laughs> a lot of times you'll see the running of the llamas, as I like to call. Here they come, I think. Um, but yeah, whenever they get fed, they come running down the hillside like uh, like Gary right here does. But it's just picture that times like ten, basically, just like a swath of llamas just come pouring down the hillside, and it's my favorite view ever. So if you do get the um, if you do download the zoo, just sit here and wait for a keeper or tell a keeper to fill up their uh, their their feeders here and just watch the running of the 
<laughs> the running of the llamas as they come down the hillside. It's fantastic. So, um, yeah, as we come over this way, as I uh, pre previously mentioned, we have Joe's Shack here. Joe's Shack has a bit of an eclectic history. Be sure to, if you want to hear the whole story of Joe's, watch the episode with the llamas and Joe's there. It's not too long of an episode, but basically Joe was a world traveler, and he settled down um, here in the uh, area where the zoo was built before the zoo was built. And he was selling burgers and uh, energy drinks, it looks like, and, and different um, adult beverages. But yeah, and uh, Joe, from his world travels, collected a lot of items and, uh, you know, kind of stashed them away. But every once in a while, whenever Joe and his friends get uh, a little bit tipsy, a little bit too many adult beverages, they will uh, they'll choose to just throw some of those exotic items or just random items up on the roof that Joe's been collecting. So, uh, yeah, and that's also why Joe's Place kind of has a different kind of... Um, theme to it or design or anything or style just because Joe is kind of like you know I'm just going to theme it with whatever stuff I have which it's a lot of Christmassy kind of stuff and um, you know just random uh, stuff like that so <laughs> that's why there's stuff on the roof just again Joe and his friends get a little bit uh, too crazy sometimes and they just throw stuff on the roof you know as you do and then behind Joe's shack we have Joe's tent there and Joe's tent has all a more of his, uh, you know, uh, collections from around the world, from all of his world travels. Um, he's set up for, again, he really likes Christmas um, and the holiday, so he really sets up for Christmas, you know, all, oops, um, all year round, putting, you know, bows on palm trees and stuff like that. Just really, really uh, enjoying that time of uh, year there. <laughs> so there is Joe's place there. And then we also have behind Joe's shack a little uh, seating area to get some great views of the running of the llamas as you eat some of Joe's burgers and energy drinks there. So yeah, there is Joe's area, Joe's shack with the llamas and everything. So let's go ahead and move on up the hillside. And this is another area that could probably be expanded out. Speaking of expansions, I almost forgot. Here is the main expansion for y'all. So once you go, I put out this path. This is the main swath of area that let's say the zoo just acquired and now you, the new, uh, you know, curator, new manager, whatever, uh, new owner of the uh, Three Golden Llamas Zoo, it is your job to expand the zoo out there. So speaking of that, as we're running up the hillside here, this zoo was built in sandbox mode with sandbox mode in mind. If you would like to, um, you know, put in power and all that fun stuff, you're going to have to do it on your own. Um, yeah, I only really play for sandbox mode. I don't really mess with that other stuff. So, but yeah, just letting you know off the, off the bat. But um, yeah, so here we are at the top of the, or just about, not even close, uh, just about the middle part of the hill there. And as I said before, here is the that little path that cuts through. Um, so if you would like to go to the jaguar habitat, just to show you, there's where we were just before there. You can cut through this way, but you also get some great views on top of the hillside here of our, um, of our llama friends there. Oh, look at them. There's all the llamas being llama. Be a llama, llama Lee majestic, llama Lee majestic. Okay, gonna run with that one. <laughs> <laughs> and here's our barn here. Again, using a lot of the, this is kind of a combination of all the Planet Zoo packs that we have here between the um, base game with some of our Africa stuff here, the thatch roof from the South America pack, um, and then we have the uh, Arctic pack uh, wood here and everything. So yeah, really just a combination of all of the packs here to make this little um, barn here for our uh, llamas. And if you go in here, not really an interior, but you know, how they go, they're actually using, oh, hello. hello. Um, but yeah, we have uh, just an area if they'd like to, they can get away from guests and kind of sleep up here and everything like that. Or oh, a keeper's feeding. It's going to take them forever to get down to the bottom of the hill, so we're not going to see the running of the llamas in this one, but <laughs> that's okay. Let's go ahead and sprint up the hill here. Another area that is ripe for expansion right through this area. But yeah, here is the, probably the star attraction of the zoo, which is why it's all the way in the back here. Um, and if you want to get your bearings, you can kind of see here where we're at. This is the monkey island down there. And there's all oh, you can actually see. There's a tape here. Or, oh my gosh, it's an anteater. Hello. Um, but yeah, you can kind of get your bearings where we are. We just made a big U-turn all the way up this mountainside here to our jaguar habitat. So this is the habitat I had the probably the most fun building, um, and it came out the closest to um, how I really, really, really wanted it to, and everything like that. So this, yeah, again, this was really, really fun to build this. So yeah, let's go ahead and we, I always take a right when we do this, but start to get some views. It's a little bit. I am now realizing I'm um, going through it right before the episode. I was looking around. It is a little bit difficult to see inside the habitat at all times because I did place some rocks a little bit too tall. But it does kind of put some focused viewing. I don't know if that's a proper term, but it does get focused viewing where 
I'm kind of forcing you to look in this area, you know, um, kind of thing. So, but yeah, uh, we also have a little bridge that juts out here. And this bridge was put here purposefully so that you can see this view right through here. Um, so yeah, sometimes you can see, you know, the Jaguar running around here going up top of its little climbing structure. But then yeah, these tiered waterfalls, that was very purposely and meticulously placed here so that you could get this view there. So we'll go around and get some better views of the tiered waterfalls there, um, which I'm going to call. Uh, oh, yeah, I would like to mention thanks to everyone that gave some amazing recommendations um, for the uh, falls here. But I did um, actually uh, decide on calling it S. Dan Wolf Falls just because um, I did mention in the episode when I build these um, waterfalls that it was a big inspiration from him because he was um, building some tiered waterfalls for his um, brand new South America or just kind of tropical kind of zoo there. So, um, again, I really, really appreciate everyone that um, put in some uh, some names for this um, for the waterfalls there they were really really good too they're actually better than Estan Wolf Falls but <laughs> um, but yeah I want to pay homage to the uh, the great creator good buddy of mine there um, Mr. Estan Wolf um, for those falls there so that is the name of the falls there Estan Wolf Falls so um, yeah there we go as we look around the habitat a little bit more you can get some really good views I don't know why no guests come out here Literally no guests come out here ever, and yet it's the best area to get views um, of the jaguar habitat. So I, yeah, I wish they, they would come out here more often. But I'm trying to get a view of the jaguar. There's only one in here, and as I was mentioning before, it is a, it is a rather large... Um, is that it? No. It is, it is a larger habitat, and it is so lush that it, it is really, really difficult um, to see the jaguar every once in a while. They are solitary creatures for the most part, but I have considered putting in um, another jaguar, just because, yeah, it can't... There it is! It can be get really difficult to see it. That's right, it does hang out a lot of times. It hangs out either in the water, just directly in the lake or the pond here in front of you, or by the sprinkler, because it's like constantly 100 to like 105 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's like constantly hot. Uh, so it's needing to cool itself off like all the time. But um, here's one of my favorite views in the entire zoo, let alone um, the jaguar habitat here. Especially if we flip it to, I think it's morning, yeah, morning time. You get some great morning time views of this uh, this habitat here. Fantastic, fantastic. So, <laughs> so there is that there. Let's go ahead and boost it back up to that. There we go. So making our way back around, making our way downtown through the Jaguar habitat, our little staff path. It was kind of sneaky, but it goes right through here. Mr. Security Guard, there are no people to secure over there. You can come over back over onto the path. Um, but yeah, here's our little sneaky backstage, and um, it is right through here. So if our Jaguar would like to, again, can get out of uh, the view of the guests through there. But there's a little tunnel underneath here. Uh, I know we kind of went through the barriers. We shouldn't do this. Shh, don't tell anyone. But yeah, the Jaguar can go down here through the barriers if it would like to, or under the tunnel. Excuse me, under the tunnel and go uh, away from guests there. So let's go ahead and head around this way, get some more views all the way around. You get 360 degree views um, all the way around the habitat for the most part. Again, some of them are kind of blocked by trees and um, rocks and stuff, um, but you do get views all the way around. And here's another um, close up view of those uh, of the S. Dan Wolf tiered waterfalls there. And also, just again to get your bearings, here's the backside of that first little, or not little, that first giant ruins um with the indian piece in front of it i don't even know what it's called but yeah so that's uh, we're kind of near the front of the zoo here um right now but you know just kind of on top of it there so as we come around this way there's a little secluded area over here if people would like to they can kind of come and uh, you know sit down just relax next to the uh, waterfalls and everything of course no guests actually use it but that's in irl that's what you would do kind of thing here we are on the back side of the um of the habitat there Again, here's another one of the things where you can... Oh, you can. It's really cool because the grass is just tall enough where you feel like you're down at the, the jaguar's level here. Um, and then the grass, you know, puts you right at the... Oh, man. Did we fall in? We fell in a hole. Um, but anyways, yeah, you can get some really cool views um, once in a while of the jaguar from over it this way as well. And then you have guests trying to climb. They're, they're so excited to see the jaguar that they are literally climbing over the bridge clamoring to go and see it so um but yeah as we walk over this way this is kind of the um ending point of the um of the habitat here this is the top of the uh monkey island waterfall right over here so that gives you a little bit more of an idea where we're at and then yeah here's the little ending area inside of a little temple or a little ruin village i guess you'd say area you get these nice little peepholes which uh, i mentioned it in the episode i might still go do it before i uh, release the map there um, that these peepholes are not 
covered in glass, so you can just kind of be like, whoop, whoop, and so can the Jaguar. <laughs> so I could probably put some uh, glass there or something like that. But yeah, like I like these little, again, little peepholes that you can kind of, you know, get these little unique views around. And then I have a bigger one of these with a little alleyway basically right over this way and this is a uh, one-way looking glass so whenever the jaguar comes over and plays with the um with the ball over here or goes up in the uh, tree or anything i think i'm gonna put another sprinkler over here because the jaguar literally doesn't do anything else except for stay next to the sprinkler because i think it's just so hot so um but yeah it's a great little view you get over this way of the jaguar as well and then uh yeah like i was saying that kind of leads you back to the um the entrance of our habitat here so there you are, the Jaguar Habitat there. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and back out. Bam! Back to the front of our zoo, because that is, my friends, the entire tour of the three Golden Llamas Zoo in uh, the form that I have it in, at least. Again, as I was mentioning uh, throughout the video, you know, there's expansion plots all over the place. Over here, uh, you know, over here, <laughs> um, on the left, or this uh, right-hand side, depending which way you look at it. Um, but there's a lot to um, expand upon if you would like to for it. Um, but yeah, here's what I kind of um, started with. You can keep this theme going if you'd like to with all the temple ruins. Again, um, the themes that came with the South America pack fit perfectly to uh, you know keep this theme kind of running through. You could also switch it up if you'd like to to be more of the kind of Joe's Shack kind of theme. You know, you can kind of run with um, this storyline or this kind of theme going on with Joe's and the bamboo looking um, tropical setting, I guess you'd say. Um, but yeah, there's a ton of possibilities. And I, again, I'd really, really like to see what y'all come up with um, for the rest of the uh, three, three Golden Llamas Zoo here. And uh, if you're not already, be sure down below is the description uh, is a link for my uh, Twitter and all that. Be sure to tag me in uh, any pictures or videos or whatever that you do of uh, completing this zoo or finishing it out there. But um, yeah, so here is again, just an overhead view i'm trying to get a good <laughs> so you can get a good view of it um, but it is pretty difficult as you can see with all of the um all of the trees and everything but yeah there's our llama ranch here is monkey island roughly in there the jaguar habitat is roughly there uh tapirs and anteaters there ish and there is your entrance way so yeah there you go that is gonna do it my friends so yeah hopefully you enjoyed this tour of the three golden llama zoo um here in planet zoo and uh, yeah if this is your first time hanging out with us don't forget hit the uh, subscribe button there stay up to date with all the latest planet zoo uh stuff that we have on the channel also hit the like button it helps out the channel helps out the video immensely there so hey thanks so much everyone for uh, hanging out and as always i'll uh, see you in the next one thanks so much